Hello, everybody, and welcome to my presentation of Ferrari options for carriage driving. My name is Mark Jerram, and I'll be guiding you through the styles issuing, the trimming assessments, and the options available for a variety of disciplines. So, initially, we approach the shoeing of these horses as we would do any shoeing. We carefully assess the solary aspect of the hoof and the lateral aspect of the hoof. We look at the shoe wear of the horses present. We see if there are any abnormalities in medial lateral balance and dorsal palmar balance. We see if there are any lower limb deviations from posture or from conformational defects. And we see the amount of hoof growth has taken place since last shoeing. And then following the static assessment, we start to perform a dynamic assessment where just like any other horse, we see them walk up in a straight line and back again. We note the footfalls of the hind feet, the flight of the limb, how the hoof is contacting the ground and whether the horse is sound. And then when the horse is brought back to us, we can then see how that hoof's loading, whether we need to make any alterations with the trim or with the style of shoe fit, or whether any other additional features are required to help enhance performance. So me personally, to keep things simple and categorized, there are three styles of shoeing. One involves the single carriage horse. Now these are horses that work alone and pull a carriage of two or three people. They are the pair or team horses. These are road horses. We can also get pairs and teams competing at FEI events as well. That's a slightly different style of shoeing again. This is a team of horses I work on. Uh, so these are do predominantly road work and they're shot appropriately. Then we have the speed horses, where these are harness race horses, uh, work on a circular track, on grass or on sand, uh, working at speeds in excess of 30 miles an hour. So there's every chance of limb interference. The pacing of the horses will be the, each side of the horse moves at the same time, or the trot is an exaggerated speed of over 30 miles an hour, uh, racing against at least six or seven other horses. A brief history of uh, working horses. This is the London Van Shoe on the left, replicated on the right hand side. Uh, these, these horses worked all the way through the cities and towns of this country. They had corkins on their hind feet to help provide grip and traction for a lot of cobbled streets back in previous times. Now we've got a lot more concrete and asphalt roads and we have less need for hill corkins now. So the single carriage horses, they tend to be shot in flat steel. They can be shot in concave, but the flat steel allows us to provide a greater surface area of, the, of these feet. These are quite good, strong feet normally. They uh, can be shot with a plain stamped style, which on the left hand side here, which is a, a, a flat inch per three eight section and shot to be left for a six week shoeing cycle. So a little bit of hill support and everything else sticking out of there because there's less chance of the horse pulling this off when working singularly or any limb interference when you're working at a slower speed. A three quarter fuller shoe, which is the example on the right hand side that can be used as well to provide a little bit extra grip if required. But if we're really looking to apply grip, the tungsten pins, as you can see on this horse, there's, there's one in the lateral heel. They can also be applied one to each heel or two in the heel and two in the toe area. Now these tungsten pins provide sufficient grip without elevating the hoof. Care has to be taken whether applying just a single pin or whether it affects the medial lateral balance over a long period of time. Uh, safe to say this horse, it does not. It's nice symmetrical feet, grows quite well. So a single pin is, is good. The least interference we can make with the shoeing package in terms of extra grip, allowing the hoof to function and slide normally, the better. Uh, but this just provides an extra bit of grip, a bit of grip and safety. 
if you want to apply a bit of extra traction to the single carriage horse, we can also apply heel corking and wedges, which is like a typical roadster style shoe. Similar to the London workhorse van, banner shoe. Uh, these, these are a slightly different design for modern day with a more of a rounded up corking on the middle aspect. Uh, sorry, more, more like a wedge rather than a corking, I should say. Uh, and this horse was working on the uh, going on the drive across a set of cobbles, as we could see on the right hand side there, where a flat shoe, be it three quarter fullered or whether it be a plain stamped with pins would not provide sufficient grip to bite into this surface. So these these heels dig in in between the cobbles and keep the horse upright. When making these shoes, it's important to make sure the toe is the same height as the heels. So it's not artificially lifting up the heel and the and, and the hock area um, because I could create an extra strain upon the joints. There is also downsides to this shoe where a, applying this style of shoe creates extra elevation to the, the center of the hoof anyway, which can allow for a little bit of prolapse. So it's probably best to apply only when necessary really to, to the horse that are going to be doing this style of work. If a horse is going to be on the on, the, on, on grass a lot or if the horse is going to be on a lot of roads like with a lot of smooth roads pins are probably best and perhaps screwing studs for turf maybe better as well and just helps reduce any artificial lifting that's my own personal preference there's obviously different thoughts on that but i feel that you know the simple more simple we can keep the horse and the hoof balance and the hoof itself into function the better so shoeing for a, a pair of horses, uh, horses work side by side. You can also have horses work in tandem, but uh, horses work in tandem pretty much, uh, you can shoe it as like the single horse, but the uh, horses work in a pair side by side. All the team of horses are shot in three quarter footed shoes. They can also be used with plain stamp shoes if required. Uh, we can actually use two pins in the heels or use four pins where we have two in the toe area as well. So the reason for that being it provides sufficient grip. So if, if one does happen to slip, the other one's not going to go with them as well. By applying these pins, it's very, very rare you'll get to slip. Um, and care must be taken with the fitting of these style of shoes. They tend to go about four weeks on the shoeing cycle. So excessive length or excessive width are not a benefit to these horses in case of interference from a horse work alongside them or horse collide into the back of them you know if uh, if there's an accident so it, lateral supports uh, would not probably not be the greatest thing to apply here unless it's absolutely necessary if they have to be applied perhaps fitted with a glue hoof wall build above there to help reduce any catching of any opposite limbs and keeping the feet balanced and level and giving them with plenty of material to last the whole shoeing cycle these horses can easily do 30, 40 miles in a week, if not more, for going out on a longer drive. So they need to have sufficient material to, to do the work over the shoeing period, but without overloading the hooves uh, and by putting excessively heavy steel up on there. Because sometimes we can get row concussion injuries. And this is a consequence here of a horse with a fetlock varus conformation. Feet turn in, overloading the lateral heel. So what happened here was a complete non-complicated quarter crack appeared on this horse um, from overloading over a longer period of time and working on ground on the hard ground. So to help unload this, a wide webbed bar shoe applied there with impression material following the hoof trim. Hoof trim was phased, was based around trying to establish level footfall which then would load the joints evenly above that. The wide web bar shoe had impression material underneath to help limit concussion. The, there was a layer of antifungal clay underneath as well to keep the frog and the sole healthy. Now looking at this style of shoe, it would look like it wouldn't provide much grip because it's got quite a lot of smooth steel on there. So applying four pins here is an absolute necessity. necessity. Uh, it provides enough grip there for the horse to work despite having all this on there. And as we can see over a long period of time that the complete 
quarter crack has bound together a corner band and the avulsion is growing out underneath. And over a period of time now, this will help to reduce the chance of his coming back. It's probably best to shoe with some form of bar shoe as a preventative now for his horse's working life. Another way of limiting concussion from roads is the application of a, a frog support pad. This is a synthetic pad. Full sole with a frog piece put in there for extra grip and frog support. There is a layer of antifungal clay on the sole and the frog to keep that healthy. There is a 40 shore impression material, two part impression material placed underneath the pad as well. This is fitted underneath the outline of the shoe. Uh, this particular horse has navicular syndrome. So any reduction in concussion from heel impact uh, at the initial contact phase of a stride is, is welcome. And this horse works really well with this type of package on here as well. There is a breakover forged into the shoe as well to help them roll into the limb as, a, as propulsion takes place. Again, these are fitted with four pins for plenty of grip, fitted with a little bit of heel support, but because these are on a four week cycle, that horse will stand on that nicely now until the next shoeing site to the next shoeing appointment. If working with these horses and they need to do a lot of work in the cities, there are some restrictions on noises in, in, in some countries. It's probably not so much of an issue here in the UK, but certainly, certainly abroad, um, where there are laws regarding keeping noise levels down. So if you're doing a bit, if a horse is doing a lot of city work, an application of a rubber shoe can be used to help reduce the noise. And it's also as a multi-benefit of reducing concussion to ascending limb. The main issue with these type of shoes will be the fact they perhaps provide a little bit too much grip and not enough slip. And that can create a little bit of an issue for the, uh, for the tendons, the flexor and extensor tendons. They can't glide into break as it would do normally. So they are a handy shoe to use with plenty of grip on concrete and and tarmac and and cobbles as well but maybe worth just using sparingly and reverting back into steel shoes as much as possible to help reduce any jarring upon the upon the uh, tendons and ligaments of the ascending limb so now we move on to shoeing for speed and with this we're looking at harness race horses these horses working in in a uh, in a, in a circle uh, when they're racing, usually about six or seven of the horses in the race, working at speeds in excess of 30 miles an hour, limbs everywhere, feet can collide quite easily, uh, horses can quite collide quite easily. So when we apply the shoes, we have to make a consideration for steel or aluminium. And this is done on a horse by horse basis um, in terms of how they're performing whether they need the extra bit of lightweight there for increased speed, increased stride length. There's a lot to this style of shoeing. There has to be fitted perimeter fit uh, to the point of heel. So there's no steel sticking out to create a, a collision injury or an interference injury and risk a shoe being pulled off mid-race. The lightweight steel shoes there, they are fitted Again, I've said with no heel support, but also when it comes to race day, an extra nail is applied at the heel, protruding above the section of a shoe, ideally on both sides, on both heel areas. And this helps to provide extra little bit of grip on the surface they're racing on. The same can be done for an aluminium shoe as well. Now, once a race is complete, these can be removed, as there are fines for the horses to be that, that do fall over in the races. Every care must be taken to keep horse and driver safe. And in order to help these work at speed, some of these hind feet can be fitted with a trailer that helps to reduce crossfire injuries. And this is when the hind foot diagonally collides with the opposite diagonal front limb. And the trailer there acts as a brake and we reduce the axial swing of the hock and helps them keep the hind limbs apart and keep the horse moving and working without any risk of, of injury. So in conclusion, 
it's important to determine the work of each of these horses. There's breed you're working on, the strength of the feet that are, that are available, the hoof conformation. Make sure the shoe that you fit to these horses is relative to how long they're going to be going in between shoeing cycles and the discipline they are performing. Well, it goes without saying, but if you apply a harness race style shoe to a single drive cob horse, that it simply won't work and won't last. And likewise, applying a heavy three quarter foot or plain stamp shoe to a harness race horse will severely hinder their progress. So think about the horse seat and the, the type of work they're doing, the variance of variable to help these horses perform and keep their injuries to a minimum, if not at all, hopefully not at all. Make sure each of these horses has plenty of traction and grip whilst they're doing their work, would depend on the surface they're working on. Look at the options of pins, heel corks. Look at applying extra nails on horses that are going to be working on turf or sand when they're racing. Make sure you can keep both horse and driver safe from overturning and slipping. And importantly, also listen to the feedback from the driver of these horses and those who, who all work with the horse, include the trainers, the grooms. Find out how they're performing. See them work if possible. And this will help you to formulate a trimming and a shoeing plan uh, and help increase the longevity of these horses working. I'd like to thank you all for watching and taking the time to watch this short presentation. And I'll present another one shortly.